Coach Tony, Wrestling Podium Performance, and today I'm going to be talking about chasing greatness and not attention. In a moment of post-workout mental clarity last week, I said this on my Instagram stories and I directed it at personal trainers, strength coaches, and athletes to stop chasing attention so much and focus on being great at what we do and what you do. What really catalyzed this whole video is on Sunday while I was making breakfast, I saw I was watching that Netflix series, Owning Manhattan, from that famous realtor in New York City, Ryan Serhant. And he was saying this to one of his now former agents, uh, the king of douches, Jonathan. He said, you're so busy chasing attention that you're not being great. And it really struck me because I said this just a few days earlier after a workout. And I'm saying this primarily to young trainers, coaches, and athletes, but really the industry as a whole and even outside of that. In today's attention-seeking economy, we're so busy looking to get views. Yes, I get the irony of this, making this video on YouTube, which remember to like and subscribe. Yes, I just shamelessly plug for attention. And we're looking for likes, subscriptions, followers, brand deals. We're focused on trying to get onto, especially young trainers today, getting onto podcasts and getting that quick satisfaction and fame, getting as many people looking at us as possible. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing and as a business myself, I understand that because I need people to come in my door right over here, hire me for my services and pay me. I need more of that to make more money to help more people. So I understand you need the attention. But the focus these days has been placed so much on chasing attention, good or bad, that we've forgotten what the actual task at hand and job is. And now I'm gonna turn this towards young athletes. With the NIL deals in the NCAA, name, image, and likeness, and we see some of these deals being massive. People like Livy Dunn and Shadur Sanders, Bronny James making millions of dollars while still in college and has caused young athletes now to be chasing the NIL deal as opposed to being great at their sport. And I'm not talking just being great as the player, but also being coachable, being good in class. Because remember, the job title or what your actual position is, is student athlete. But with NIL deals, more and more student athletes aren't showing up to class, which they're losing that student part and just being athlete. The issue here is you can be cut from the team and sent home. Sure, you can also get the brand deals and not have to worry about it, but that's gonna be fleeting and short-lived because the main value you bring to that company is your association with the team. Hence the name, image, the image of the team and you, and your likeness, using your image and your name to make money for the brand or for the school. But if you're not fulfilling your duties as on the student end and you flunk out or you're not fulfilling your contractual obligations to the team and you're booted from the team, now you're losing all that opportunity. We see so many young athletes today. Yeah, you have a great social media following, but you're a dime a dozen for the most part, unless you are excellent at your sport. So you should be focusing on being great at your sport, whether it's a tennis player, a golfer, swimmer, track athlete. That could be a sprinter, high jumper, long jumper, shot putter, hammer thrower, decathlete, heptathlete, steeplechaser, long distance runner, marathoner, cross country runner. Many ways for you to be absolutely great. Basketball player, football player, whether you're a quarterback, cornerback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defensive back, defensive end, doesn't really matter. Focus on being great at your position, being the best player you can be, because the thing that that's gonna open the door to is the brand deal, but what comes after college? The professional level, and that's where the real money is made. Not just from brand deals, but your contract, guaranteed or not guaranteed, incentives, performance bonuses, fame, fortune, that's where you're really gonna make a name for yourself, a legacy, generational wealth. 
That's why I'm focusing so much on stating this to young athletes. Let's take a look at some of the greatest athletes of all time. From before the NIL era, from before social media. Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player of all time, in my eyes. Or let's even talk about the, set, the other greatest basketball player of all time, LeBron James. They both came into the league before social media. Their focus was being the best player they could be. One was more of a scorer, one is more of a passer. One was just absolutely head and shoulders above everybody else in basically any way offensively and was a defensive player of the year. I'm talking Michael Jeffrey Jordan, who wasn't even the number one overall pick in the 1984 draft. But he has the most MVPs. He's also got an award named after himself. The MVP trophy is now the Michael Jordan trophy. He has six finals most valuable players. He has two Olympic gold medals. Let's take a look at, Michael, at LeBron James. He's a four-time MVP, a four-time finals MVP. He's been in the league for 20 seasons. Oh, he's also the all-time leading scorer. He's a two-time Olympic gold medalist, one-time bronze medalist. He's going for his third Olympic gold medal going into his 21st year in the NBA, or maybe his 22nd year. I don't know, he's played so damn long at this point, I'm starting to lose track. So that's just basketball. Track and field, you have Usain Bolt, the greatest sprinter to ever live, the fastest man of all time. He got, in three consecutive Olympics, gold medal in the 100 meter and the 200 meter. They crossed the line three times in first place in the four by one as Team Jamaica, but 2008 has been nullified. He has the world records. He focused on greatness. Let's take a look at football, European soccer, or as the world calls it, football, as we in North America call it, soccer. Lionel Messi, Ren Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Pele. These are names we associate with greatness on the pitch. Why? Because they are just so damn good at soccer. A lot of people think overnight success. Lionel Messi famously said, it took him 17 years to become an overnight success when he signed his first real professional contract. Move over into the world of tennis. You've got Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi, uh, John McEnroe on the men's side. Let's take a look on the women's side. Serena and Venus Williams, whose life story was made famous in that biopic, King Richard, starring Will Smith, where he got the Academy Award for Best Actor the night that he famously smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. But their focus for all of them was to be the best tennis player on the planet. On the women's side, Venus Williams broke so many barriers. She's a black female in a sport dominated by rich white girls. She rose to be the number one player of all time. Her and her sister dominated the doubles ranks. Then her younger sister Serena came along and has become the greatest female tennis player to ever live to this point. They've now made a Netflix documentary on her. That's just how good she is. In swimming, you've got the likes of Michael Phelps and Katie Ledecky. Michael Phelps, going into the 2008 Olympics, swam every day of the year, essentially, without missing a training session for a couple of years. He then went on to win eight gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Four years before that, he missed out on that goal of eight gold medals. But his first Olympic Games was 2000. His last Olympic Games was 2016. He went to five Olympic Games. He's unanimously the greatest swimmer of all time and quite possibly the greatest Olympian of all time because he's got so many medals he can pay for his groceries with bronze medals at this point. The world of gymnastics. It was, there was a statistic recently released where China is sending the most decorated men's team of all time. They have something like 35 international medals. There's one girl on the women's side of gymnastics who has the same number of international medals as the entire Chinese team. Little Miss Simone Biles. Absolute greatness, greatest of all time. Now, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down here, talking about chasing greatness, in all of these examples, they chase being the absolute best at what they do before chasing any attention. But the attention came to them anyways. Why? Because we as humans are drawn to excellence. 
Well, yes, a lot of the Western world these days wants to vilify people who rise to the top. We want to bring them down to our level when we should be emulating that success. We should be chasing and going after what these people have done. But what is the problem with chasing attention first? For the most part, you lack the skill required. You don't have all the tools in your toolbox to be able to do the things you're either promising or you're putting out rhetoric that is very dogmatic, trying to build yourself a little tribe of an echo chamber, which, yeah, you're giving a piece of the puzzle. Now, coming back to the fitness industry, so many trainers are trying to build their own little tribes and circles. Oh, I'm keto this. Oh, knees over toes over here. Full range, partial range, high bar, low bar squatting. Oh, intermittent fasting. Here's the truth. All of these are tools. They all work. But the issue is knowing when to use said tool for the job. If you go to a carpenter or a mechanic, I'm actually going to use a mechanic for this. They're going to have all kinds of different wrenches. Why? Because each wrench has a specific job. It's just like different diets, different macro proportions, different exercise selection, different ranges of motion, injury preventions, goals, performance avenues are going to require a different tool to be used. <coughs> but if you're so busy chasing attention instead of being great at what you do, you're missing out on gaining those tools. And without those tools, when you get all these people in the door, you're trying to constantly put a square peg through a circle hole. Yeah, every so often you're going to get that square peg through the hole, but you're not going to properly service that client or that athlete. The other way so many people in the industry these days chase attention is, I'm bigger than you, so I know better than you. Horseshit. It's the easiest industry to enter into based upon appearance other than modeling. I've got bigger arms, so I know what I'm doing in the, in the weight room. Okay, show me how to squat properly. High bar, low bar, safety bar. Show me how to fix someone who's got a tit, who has discrepancy in their dorsiflexion, for example. Or someone's had a knee replacement, or their meniscus two weeks ago had to have arthroscopic surgery done in order to repair things. These are just a few examples. Now, to give you an example of some of the very high-end personalities in the fitness industry who went after greatness long before attention, you got the likes of like a Paul Check, an Ian King, the guy who first came up with the whole tempo system. You got Charles Polcom, one of my mentors. You got the likes of Ken Kanakin, who honestly is the godfather of this industry. Health and fitness, treatment. The guy puts on the Swiss Symposium. He might be doing it another one, a smaller one this year, but he brings in the best of the best, whether it's Ed Cohn for powerlifting, or he's bringing in John Berardi, sorry, Dr. John Berardi for, med for nutrition. He's bringing in Dr. Le Mike Leahy for active release therapy techniques, the thing he pioneered and created. He brings the best of the best in. Why? He only wants greatness around it. You don't have to agree with every person, but guess what? They went after being extremely good and great before chasing attention. Whereas a lot of influencers, male or female, the men typically, oh, I got big muscles and this and that. The girls take a look at my ass and my moose knuckle and I'm hot. Okay, how does that help your client? That's the point I'm trying to get across here. Chase greatness before attention. If you lack the skills or the tools to be able to get the job done, but you keep pretending like you do know, you're only harming the client I'm going to be honest here. When we're in business, yes, we do need to get attention. We do need to get people in the door. We do need a little bit of that side of things. I admit, I'm dog shit bad at it because as you can see, I'm quite blunt. So I'm going to push some people away, but I'm going to bring other people in. I can factually say, if you want to get stronger, faster, better performing, come and see me. If you just want someone to model coddle you, 
don't walk in the door because that's not my style. I don't know how to do that. It's not me. Because I want to push you to be better. I have a joking saying, it's half joking, with my clients. I only ask for one thing, perfection. But the reality is perfection is an impossible task. What it's really getting from them is effort. All I truly want is their best effort on the day. Some days are gonna be better than others. But in order for you to chase greatness and get the best out of yourself, you have to put in the best effort you can right now in order to get the result you want. As I said, some days will be better than others. You can be strong one day and your warm up weights might feel heavy the next. But as long as you're giving your best effort every time, you're going to get the result. You're chasing your own individual greatness. Now I focus primarily on the fitness industry, strength and conditioning, athletes, clients, but this extends outside of that to everything in the world. Take a look at any industry. The best people in that industry that you can think of. I'll use culinary right now. When we think of excellence in the culinary world, there's a few names that instantly pop up. Gordon Ramsay, three Michelin star chef, restaurant empire, TV personality. He didn't get any of that just because he was chasing attention. He's had to polish himself for TV because if you go back and you watch the first season of like Hell's Kitchen and you watch it on Netflix where it's uncensored, every other world he's cussing people out. Why? Because he's wanting the best out of them at every opportunity. He's wanting the absolute best. Perfection is what he's after. Why is he after that? His name is attached to something. He's a three Michelin star chef for a reason. Now the attention has followed him. This goes the same for one of his primary mentors, uh, Marco Pierre White, who gained the nickname at one point as the demon in the kitchen. He famously kicked a critic out of his restaurant for disrespecting staff. He always wanted excellence. Now we can extend ban that around the world. You got the likes of Hessen Blumenthal at the Fat Duck, few times named the best restaurant in the world. You got Albert and Ferran Adria of El Bulli in Barcelona. It was named best restaurant in the world for several years. And it also pioneered a new form of cuisine, haute cuisine, molecular gastronomy. He chased greatness before getting attention. But in the world we live, so many people are chasing the attention without being able to deliver. The restaurant industry, the thing I absolutely love about it, is that, yeah, you could put out beautiful things on social media and get people in the door, but can you service them when they're there? Can you get the food out? Can you keep the food quality high? Does it taste as good as it looks? Because if it doesn't, and a critic comes in, or a Michelin inspector comes in, you're screwed, and they're gonna roast you. That uh, critic is gonna pull you apart in the paper. That Michelin inspector, well, if you had a really bad night and you were a three-star restaurant, you might lose your stars in the next Michelin guide. Those are the stakes involved, and from that, you could be losing millions in revenue. Think about your favorite actor or your favorite singer, rapper. It took them years to get to where they are. It took them starting out in a small crowd. I'll use Taylor Swift and Beyonce as examples here. They started out doing small crowds. Beyonce joined, was in a group called Destiny's Child through the 90s and early 2000s. Then she branched out onto her own. Then they played it to larger audiences. They fronted for other people or opened for them. Then they had their own tour, selling out arenas. Now Beyonce and Taylor Swift sell out NFL-sized stadiums around the world. Why? They perform excellently they do very well, and they crush it on stage. Other things we have to think about, no matter what industry you're in, whether you're a soldier, be the best damn soldier you can be. If you're a janitor, clean things better than anybody else. Chase greatness in your craft. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter where it is. Take pride in your work at every opportunity. Don't half-ass things. 
don't just do things to go through the motions and just to hit the clock, nine, the nine to five shift and once it's five o'clock out the door, be the best lawyer you can be. Or in the case of a client who just walked in, the best translator or actuary possible. That way you're in demand and you present at conferences. So I say again, and I challenge you, stop chasing attention and chase greatness.